Hey guys, today I'm gonna talk about entity framework migrations. In my last episode, I said we're going to make a relational database using entity framework core. There are two important things you should keep in mind when you're making relational database. One thing, it should be flexible. That means you should be able to make any database schema very easily. And second, when you're making these changes, you should be able to preserve data. That's why migrations are awesome. Migrations, if you learn migration commands, you should you will be able to do these database schema changes on any platform, on any database. And second, it gives you an additional step to preserve your data. So how does migration work? There are two main things, there are two main steps you should keep in mind. One is you create the migration and other is you apply the migration. For creating the migration, you run add migration command and for updating, for applying the migration, you say update database command. Sometimes you make changes in your model which you don't like and you create a migration, but still you can use a remove migration command to remove the migration that you have created. Sometimes people make modification into their models, they create the migration and then they update the database, but you can always revert that migration. Sometimes you want to preserve the data. Sometimes you want to make changes in your migration code so that you can pull data from one table and put it in some other table. That's why customizing of migration codes comes into play. You can also generate SQL scripts from your migration. You can't connect your Visual Studio to production database and sometimes you have to get your migration verified from your database administrator. So Entity Framework gives you an option to generate the SQL script so that you can run the SQL scripts in production and keep your code in sync with production database. So what are all these commands? Like I said, add migration and name of the migration is how you create a migration. And then if you want to apply that migration, you run update database command. If you do not like that migration, it, you can also remove the migration but you can only remove migration which are not applied in database. If you want to revert a migration, you can write the name of the last good migration that you want to go back to. And like I said, you can generate the SQL scripts for all your migration. For that, you can run script migration command. And these are the commands which you can run from anywhere because you know these are command line interface commands. So you can run it from Linux, Mac, you can run it from VS Code, JetBrains, any ID that you're using. All right, so what are we gonna do today? In my last episode, I created publisher table and in this demo, I'm gonna create a book table. I'm going to make some mistakes so that I can show you how you can use remove migration and revert migration commands so that you know it's helpful for you. All right, let's jump into the demo. So this is the same uh, project that I used for my last episode. Um, here, I'm gonna add my class. I'm gonna say add book, add book. And I wanna create uh, three properties. One is my primary key, book ID. Second is um, main title of the book. And third is uh, subtitle of the book. So these are the two mistakes I'm going to make. Let's just assume that I'm a new, new developer and I do not know what all tables should be there, what all columns should be there. All right, so before I start creating the migration and updating the migration update my database, I want you to look at two things. One is this migration folder. And here I have initial create migration, initial create migration, which is creating a table publisher, which we created last episode. And uh, I have this bookstore DB context uh, snapshot. So if you look at it, you can see only it's creating, uh, there's only one entity that is trying to create, which is publisher. Okay. And another thing that I want to look at uh, is this, these tables. 
So if I refresh these tables, you can see there's only one publisher publisher table here. And when I open this EF migration history table and look at its data, I can see there's only one migration which has been applied here. And that's how Entity Framework keeps track of all uh, how many migration have been applied. All right, so let's um, let's add this book table, this book class in our DB context, so that it knows that this is the um, um, this is the table that needs to get added into the into the database. So I'm gonna say uh, book and call my DB set books. Nice. All right. So to apply these changes to um, you know update our database, the first thing that we have to do is add migration. And I'm gonna say create table book because we're creating a table. Before I hit enter, I want you to look at this migration folder and see what happens here. So when I hit on enter, you can see that it created a class here. It created a class which is saying that create books class with two fields, main title and subtitle. And when I go back to my snapshot class here, you can see that it added an another entity for book. And there was already publisher, it added book into it. All right. So let's assume that I'm a new developer. I do not know if the, um, I do not know that uh, this should have been just title, I added main title and subtitle. So my, uh, the code reviewer came and checked, okay, this is a mistake. So if you want to revert, if you want to remove this migration, you can just say remove migration. And this command will remove all, uh, remove the migration, the last migration which hasn't been applied in the database. So I'm gonna hit enter. That will remove the migration. So if I go back to my migration folder, you can see that there is nothing in this, nothing in this uh, folder for create book. And if I go back to my model snapshot, you can see that there is only one publisher entity now. Nice. So let's uh, let's see how we can revert this migration. So I'm gonna I'm gonna add my migration again. It created the class, and it changed the uh, uh, snapshot. It added book into it. And one thing to notice here is if I go back and open my EF migration you do not have that migration create table book migration in my in my migration table here that gets that gets filled the row gets added when you update the migration so when i say update database that's when it says applying migration create table book and i refresh my table here the migration table here you can see that it adds another row saying that this is the last migration which has been applied. And I refresh my table, you can see books gets added into my database with the main title and subtitle. But then my database administrator comes and says like, oh, there's a mistake. This shouldn't have been, these two columns shouldn't have been added into our database. You gotta, you gotta revert these changes. So to revert the change, what I'm gonna do I'm gonna see what is the last good migration and that's where I would like to go back to. So I have this create table, which is not a good, good migration. I have this initial create migration, which is a good migration. So I'm gonna say update database, initial, initial create. And when I hit enter, it will, it will say reverting migration for creating book. So if I refresh my table, I only have initial create now. When I refresh the tables, you can see the, the book is gone, but migration, my migration is still there. To remove this migration, you'll have to run a remove migration again. But I'm not gonna do that. I wanna show you if you make the mistake, if you create this migration, you apply the migration, people started adding data into this, 
then reverting is not an option because you will lose the database. You will lose the data. So how do we handle that situation? I'm going to say update database again, which will apply my wrong migration into the database. If I refresh my table, you can see the wrong migration has been applied. You can see main title and subtitle. And let's go ahead and add some data into this. I'm going to say the main title of my book is the Lord of the Rings. And the subtitle is the return of the kings. Nice. So if I refresh the table, you can see that one row has been added into my books table. At this point, reverting back to initial create is not an option. It's not a good option at least. So what I would like to do, I'm gonna go back to my books class, book class, and say that, you know, the new developer made a mistake and this shouldn't have been this shouldn't have been two columns there should have been only one column named title nice and i would like to i would like to update this changes into my database all right so to do that i'm gonna go back to um, creating the migration i'm gonna say create migration and I'm going to name it as drop main title and sub title from book. Nice. And when I hit enter, it will create a migration which will, which will have the functionality to drop these columns. And it gives you a warning too. An operation was scaffolded that may result in a loss of data. This is nice of entity framework. It's telling us like if we apply this migration, you may lose some data. So be careful, get it reviewed before you apply this migration. This is where, this is where customizing uh, migration comes into play. So what I want to do, I want to uh, uh, set the title of my book as concatenation of main title and subtitle so that, so that I don't lose the data which is already there in main title and subtitle. For that, I'm gonna cut this. I'm gonna customize my migration. And I'm gonna tell my migration builder to build a SQL query. SQL query, which is going to update, which is going to update my books table and set title, set title to main title. plus subtitle plus subtitle nice so what are we trying to do here is before we drop our main title and subtitle we would like to get data from here and put it into our title so that we don't lose the data nice so yeah let's go ahead our customize uh, let's go ahead and apply our customized migration so i'm going to say update update database nice so when i hit enter it will apply our migration says drop main title and subtitle if i go back to my books table here refresh it you can see that now it only has title column it does not have main uh, main title and subtitle and if i open the data you can see that it only has title and it preserved our data it persisted our data so that See, this is why migrations are awesome because it gives you an extra step to take care of your data. All right, so we created migration, uh, we applied that migration, we know how to remove migration, we know how to report migration, we can customize migration. Uh, the last step I wanna talk about is this, how we can create script of all the migrations. So the only command is script migration. So when I hit enter, it will create the whole script for all the migrations that I've run. I'm gonna make it a little smaller. So you can see that it created a migration history table, then publisher, then it inserted 
um, it record the first initial create and then it created box it created it added another row into it and then so it maintained all the database changes that you did for all the migration into a SQL script and you can get the SQL script verified from your database administrator and uh, you know you can run it in production SQL because you cannot connect to your production SQL here nice so yeah um, in my next videos I'm going to talk about how we can use this migration in creating relational database so yeah stay tuned if you have any questions you can follow me on Twitter or Facebook and don't forget to subscribe to the channel thanks for watching bye